Okay, so let's start. Uh, I will talk about passwords and Gopher Network. Unfortunately, Karik is a friend of mine. Let's see, next, there we go. Uh, he couldn't make it for personal reasons. So, but I guys should have started just with me. So, so I guess, I guess I, I, I will be the one giving the talk, right? So, who we are? I mean, well, Karik is not here, but he works at Function, but we, we used to work together at Microsoft. Uh, I'm still working at Microsoft. American guy, born huge. Uh, he's, he's the one who usually work at Defcon and Backpack as a, as a goon. So you can miss. So, um, so he's the guy. So basically, when we were working at Microsoft together for like two years, so we have done many, many security assessments. So we came up with some, some methodology. I mean, uh, if you do this for a while, I mean, you have your own methodology and, and tools and stuff. So, so we're thinking about passwords and stuff. So we are going to, 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 to talk some, some tools we use, uh, the techniques and stuff, and I will give you some real examples of, of stuff we see when we do the security reviews. <coughs> so that, that the thing we will cover for, for this talk, right? So why why talk about something and, and why? I mean, these days, I mean, uh, software vendors, I mean, with the operating system, I make, I become much better, right? So done vendors, I mean, it's not like we, we can still so we have to move to more to the application level and exploit all the type of vulnerabilities like like password, for example, the user the usually many organizations are, are very weak. So we are going to take uh, advantage of that, right? So we will, we will talk about common password sources, where we can find them, how we can use them, and stuff like that. Some tools, actually most of the tools we will call in this talk are public. So we have put the resources and you can go and download those tools. For all methodology we have we have come up. Um, right now in this talk I'm just going to give you a light overview. I'm not going to into the details because it's a methodology we use inside Microsoft for reviews, uh, for internally in, inside the company, and also we also go to, to the customers and governments worldwide and we use this methodology. And we also use some internal tools, I'm not going to talk about that, but the, those tools help, help us to give this kind of password thing and all that type of thing, right? So, <coughs> You have multiple passwords for multiple things, right? So the same thing happens well with, with any, any company, right? So we have default passwords, and it's very, very common. I mean, we can find passwords in files, configuration files, services, and the application in databases, registry. I mean, keep, think about it. I mean, with the browser, how many passwords you are, you are keeping inside your browser? Plenty of, many, I guess, I guess. You have instant messages, email clients, uh, online games. I mean, there's so many things. So think about it in a company, in a company they use a lot of powers and many times they usually tend to be weak. I'm sure if any of you do security reviews, you will see these kind of things all, all the time, right? And in this talk we will talk about uh, the code, the code reviews and the code and also in different factor. So we will talk about both things a little bit. So there's plenty of powers everywhere in the companies. And still I think I think password in general is still a huge problem in this days. I mean many companies are focused, yeah, we have uh, Yes, some of them. Yeah, we have a R roll and we have an antivirus up to date. Patches, hopefully, is up to date and it's all that. Okay, that's nice. But still, there are many things you are still missing. <coughs> so, that's the thing. So, as you can see, we can find password everywhere. In, in, in think, about your, think about your computer and that multiply with all the computers in the, in the company. So, we are talking about thousands of passwords. Passwords, and many times they are weak, well known, and so like that. So uh, these days, uh, I was talking before, I mean, why do you want to run exploits? Yeah, I mean, running, running an exploit, getting, getting a shelter and all that stuff, it's, it's nice, and it's, I mean, it's always nice to do, do that, but many times you cannot do it. For example, we, we, when we go to a review, it's not like we get permission to, to do any, any vulnerability exploits with, with shelters or anything like that. So we have to think about other ways we can show vulnerabilities without exploiting, exploiting any, any issues, right? So we think, we think the password after thing usually gets very good results and we can show proof without any, without setting shell code or anything like that to the customer, right? Or inside inside the companies. 
Rick Patwell. I mean, and that's and that's usually a huge issue in almost any any organization. So far, when I go to security reviews, I still find a lot of issues with this weak password or whatnot, non password at all. So that's that's so you can see all that kind of stuff around. Excuse me. Third password, the asshole. Number <laughs> So those are examples of what password people are using password and they're gonna think about it and, and usually I mean for, for a good for some point of view, I mean you will never I mean well, well at some point you will but it will be years cracking. So that's that's not the approach we want to follow. So those in theory are still password, but now we will see we can abuse them quite easily without doing any good for exploring any any abilities or, or stuff like that. So, and people have to start thinking about, about this. <coughs> so, for example, in my team, I, I work for the Information Security Group in the ACE team. Uh, we, we collect all the information we, for, for our reviews, and we, so to perform some uh, statistics every year. So, uh, a couple of months ago, in January, uh, we took uh, data from 2008 2009 to see what's going on, and that was the top five. Uh, it was, in, this, in this case, it was just on, on application level, so it's not counting the infrastructure. But we can get data from both if we want. But for example, in, in, our, in our internal data we have, uh, we came up with this metric. I, I still, you can see, for example, the second, the red, the created second. I mean, we still see many passwords, they are not even protected in clear text. And that's very common, and I will, I will show you some more examples of that. So still, we are seeing that quite, quite a lot in configuration files and all that stuff. So this is still the... Oh, yeah, 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 actually we, we created this, this method on January. Of 2010? Yeah. And actually it's amazing. We still see... Um, uh, so, how many say... I mean, the, those, come on. I think all of you here have here about all these issues. For sure. And we still see, and when we go to the security reviews and the, the application level. So we still see all people, developer teams in, in, the, in the clients that are still doing all this kind of stuff. It's, it's amazing. And password is still one of the biggest issues still. So it's, it's, it's amazing. <coughs> so for example, this is Carl, uh, the, 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 the two gigs uh, this year. I mean, last year, for example, I know the, the first one. Uh, he was doing a, a, like a pen test, so a similar pen test, if you want to call it that way. But like, you can do it, like, you can do a pen test, but you can just do it in a good reality. So it's like a weird thing. But anyway, that, that's what we get. So actually, in, in, this, in his case, he was able to, to get the, to the UPS for the data center using the default password through internet. And that's real. And, and he was able to, to do that. And, and so, and then another another geek he did he came up with the the, the second and those are real things real things we see we, I mean we are talking 2010 and, and and still we see a lot of stuff and and the, the many of the examples I'm going to show you that are maybe internally in, in organization but many times you can do the same thing from from internet so attackers are, are I'm sure they're doing that so the people have to start thinking doing that doing something about it. I mean, I, I guess I guess the problem is we are talking about big, uh, process, uh, technology, and people. So many companies they, they put too, too much focus on technology. So we have to invest in a, a lot of technology, the, the latest firewall, the latest idea, the latest what, whatever. But still, the people in the organization they don't know anything about security or very limited knowledge. So we have to also train our, our people. So, and that's that's one of the issues, I guess. We need more awareness still. <coughs> so now we will show you some, some examples about what we do when we do a security, I mean in, in our security reviews, I'm, I'm just talking about passwords, but of course we do a lot of things more, right? So let's think, let's think about password, right? If we have a password, we can manage all. I mean, it's not like we have just one password, at least we have a, a bunch of passwords and hopefully we can get to the entire organization. And usually that's, that's the case. With a few passwords, we, we can get too many sites. I mean, so in, in, instead of doing live demo, because I was not sure about time and all that stuff, instead I, I'm doing a lot of screenshots and I'm, I'm, I will put you up at a network diagram and I will give you the examples instead of doing this live demo. So let's imagine, let's, let's think we are inside a 
corporate network, the firewall, whatever. We have a, we have access to a to a desktop, for example. I mean, physically or through internet with some kind of malware or, or whatever, right? So we are inside this desktop thing. So now we we then want to move forward into, into the into the organizational network. So instead of start start starting uh, launching a lot of tools through the network to see what's going inside, let's think about this desktop we have right now. What we can do inside this desktop, and then move forward. So we're thinking move from from this desktop move move forward, right? So first thing we do is start to to look for local password in this machine. And I'm going to show you a, a bunch of tools that you can you can download it they are for free and they are really nice. For example, here are places for email some popular email clients, right? Outlook, Thunderbird, lot of notes. So for example, for Outlook, you can find the passwords. I mean, they are, they are encrypted, so you have to decrypt it. But it's not that difficult. It, it, and these tools I'm going to show you they do that in, in ten seconds, actually. So, for example, but those are the location of the passwords. So here, like for example, in the C of passwords, you remember before. So we have passwords in registry, in files, and all that stuff. So here you can see the places where, where, where the passwords stored. So, for example, for the Outlook, you can see in the in the registry, in the third member, that's in the, in the directory, and you have to search for a for a file name with .x .s extension. Lotus Notes. And look for user ID uh, file, and th those are the places where this pre this application store the passwords. So now we are moving around. We are, we are fine. And usually, can people the desktop has or Outlook, or Thunderbird, or Lotus Note, whatever. But usually, yeah, you can find any of those stuff, right? In 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 any in in organization, usually. So so now we have one password using this tool. Now we are getting the password, and here, for example, you can see we we get one of the passwords. So using just actually some of these tools they need to, to be installed. Other it's just an executable, execute, and you get the password in, in five seconds. It takes, it takes nothing to, to to and for example this this uh, this application it can crack Outlook, uh, Thunderbird, and many many types of, of email characters. So so we get the password right now. We have just one password. So okay, so we move forward. So now we have just one password. Okay, in this case maybe it was from home account. So let's imagine in this case, okay, we have a, a home account. We'll see what we can do with that later. But in, but many times, for example, the email can is, is configured with internally with this email service of, of the of the um, of the company. So in that case, we will have an account of the of the, of the company. In this case, let's say it's, it's for internet. So now we have that also. Let's move forward. What one more we can do? Okay, let's move to the browser level. The browser is huge. It's global. I mean, usually people tend to store a lot of passwords in the in the in the browser many times. For example, those are the places you can find the passwords in in the Internet Explorer, Firefox, Opera, Google Chrome, and there are some tools to decrypt the password in, in no time. So usually in the browsers, yeah, you can, who, who doesn't keep their social networks, uh, whatever, bank. So there's so many stuff there you can find in the in the browsers password. So it's always nice. I mean, usually you get something nice in, in the browsers. I mean, you can pull out the Facebook, Facebook, Gmail, or Hotmail accounts for sure. Many times when you do this. So here, for example, we run a tool in, uh, and now we get the, the uh, Firefox credential. And he's using this password for, for MSN, live.com. So now we, we get this password. OK, now we have two passwords. And let's imagine we, we can get more stuff in, in, on, the, on the car, right? So now we have two passwords. OK, let's keep moving. It's getting good. <coughs> instant messaging. I don't know how many people in your companies allow inter instant messaging. But me there are still, I think, more and more and more, more companies are, are allowing, allowing this kind of tools to, to be using in, in the corporate, right? So again, there are many, many, many instant messages. I mean, there are so many, it's, it's crazy. So, so for some example, the common ones, I guess, Messenger, ICQ, Yahoo, so you can see uh, where are those in the condition file, in the Windows in the, for the live Messenger, ICQ, that's the path to the file where you can find the passwords, Yahoo in the registry, and there are many clients. So again, we, we run, a, hopefully, the, 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 the machine we have just compromised, or we are doing the security review, 
uh, as an instant messaging. So we are, we run we run another tool and now we get the messaging password. So we start moving. Now we have like three passwords or more. It depends how many, for example, in the browser. So we, we just keep moving. I mean, still we haven't done a much thing. I mean, we are just running a couple of tools in, in, the, in the box we have and getting password. And now then we will move forward our personal network in, in the company. <coughs> so what else? That's another one. So for example, in the in the <coughs> let me take water a little bit. So for one of the credentials. So we have another another place if we can find the, the wireless connection and, and those, for example, this the, the encryption is kind of weak and some people don't say it's, it's not an encryption uh, even, but that's a, I guess that's a discussion. But you can find, for example, the credential in the in the registry for XP or or in a directory path in, in the Windows Vista. Same same thing for for usually for Windows 7. You can also find it usually in the same places as Vista. So now moving forward and, and, um, and now for example good thing now for example we have more passwords and now we have a password for the, for the wireless I mean this is kind of interesting because I mean if we have phys physical access I mean if we are internet maybe it doesn't 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 do any good maybe to have the wireless password but if, if we are physically now we have another attack vector we can use now we have access to the, to the wireless so maybe uh, maybe uh, in that Computer, I was sitting there. It was not mine. I was sitting there for a few minutes, a few minutes, whatever. And now I, I, I pull out the wireless credentials, so now I can st I can use st still work through the network in, in this customer, but through the wireless. So now we have another attack vector. So that's usually quite quite nice to 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 have if you have some kind of physical access or close access, right? So we got, we keep moving about for. And this, uh, we are getting so many passwords. I mean, and this, this for example, I mean, these examples are pretty much real. I mean, we have done it. The only thing here for the presentation, we have put everything together to look more nicely, right? But we, most of the things we are showing here, we have done it for real in, in customers, right? When we do the assessments. So more things. I mean, those are. I mean, for the BNC, I mean, RDP for the Remote Desktop Protocol, uh, those are amazing. Usually, when you talk with customers, no, we don't allow NBC. And uh, usually, you find NBC everywhere in the, in, the, in the computer organization. I don't know, I don't know in, in other countries, but for example, in Spain, it's quite popular, and you can find many, many customers where BNC is told. Um, and they always tell you, no, we don't, we don't allow that. But then, I mean, it's everywhere in, in the company. And then, uh, uh, so those are registries, you can find the uh, VNC. Uh, and, and for example, for the RDP, you can, if, if people have safe, safe the credentials, those, those are, you have to search for the .rdp file. So we've been moving, and actually, we, we, if, if we get credential for those, it's kind of nice, because usually that, that means we have access to another system. So we can start working, working to, to other places when we are done with the machine. So, so we move to another machine and do the same. So we start working there and there. So, so it's kind of it's kind of nice. I mean, here we are doing more manually and stuff like that, right? But I mean, we are thinking ways to be more efficient, working some some uh, custom tools to be more efficient and do more in an automatic fashion way, right? I mean, you don't want to do this one just by one one by computer, right? You will never finish in a huge in a huge organization, right? So we have to be more effective. But I mean, there are some tools that are nice, but still, uh, to my knowledge, I mean, right now there, there are not any good tools to do that. All this kind of thing right now in a in a fashion way, just quick or something, or, or launch the tool and do it. But anyway, I guess it will come soon. <coughs> so now. For the BNC, I don't know, let's, let's um, I don't know, for example, who here do any security reviews? More in the reviews, in core reviews, in chapter, anyone? No reviews, no security consultants or security reviews? For example, uh, if you do infrastructure reviews, you will find this kind of stuff at BNC and other remote tools that, that I mean, system administration use. For the BNC, it's kind, of, it's kind of funny. I mean, uh, let's see if people keeping attention. Uh, the password we have seen all the time. Anyone remember the password? 
Perfect. Okay, so I want to be someone to be in attention. Okay. Perfect. Uh, and and anyone knows why it's not here? Size limitations. Excuse me? Size limitations. Yeah. Actually the thing is with BNC is kinda it's kinda funny. The BNC, all, all the version to my knowledge right now with BNC is using uh depth or triple less. And they always tell you, ah, it's secure, it's just in less. Uh, two things, actually, they always limit the, the password to seven characters, and the, and the desk encryption is a fixed key. So actually, it's quite easy to, to crack, it's always the same results. So it's, it's kind of funny, I mean, I, I know, and a lot of people are using this like a, like a tool for administration purposes in the organization, and that's, they always tell you, nah, this is secure, using triple less or desk or whatever. And say yeah, sure, but there's some limits that is the, is the encryption is fixed, so it's quite easy to to decrypt. And there are many, and, and now and actually, it's also we have a lot of experts the DNC stuff. So usually, it's not not good practice to, to use this tool, but it still is very popular in, in, in the customers. I, I see it quite a lot in, in when I do the security reviews. We we find this kind of stuff everywhere. So now we have uh, like, like let's say five password, maybe more, depending on how many password we have get with with an email browser or whatever, right? So we are still working our way, our way up in, in this computer. So now it's kind of nice. We have all the all the password and all this stuff. So. Network shares, for example, the same thing. I mean, many people tend to to store all the credentials for the network, so you have to write all the time the, the, the computer you, you want to log in. So, for example, for the network share, you, you, those are the places where, where Windows store, store all the credentials. For XP, that's the that's application, that's the directory path. Same for, for, for Vista, you can find the credentials there, right? And, and you can see it's very common, we're always the same. Registry, application, files, so there are many, many pages. And you can do the same, I, I guess. Uh, if you want to do some, when you do the, when you do security reviews, just go to the customer and try to do something like that, to get all the password you do and show the customer and see. It's, it's kind of funny, I mean, to, to do this kind, of, this kind of work. So for example, here now we have a, we run another tool and it gives you the, it gives us the password, the IP, uh, and account. So now we so now it's kind of nice because now we we now we have another machine we can log in and, and do the same thing, move there and work our way. Same thing we have done to start from the beginning or whatever, right? So we move forward in the target, um, and and we do this because we we don't want to exploit. We, we we don't want to. So we move a lot of this technique for for the password gathering and password exploitation because we don't even want to use exploits in that, in that case as as I said before. So it's kind of like we move around the, the, the corporate. I mean, many as I said before. I mean, many companies they take too much time, focus on the firewall or internet or whatever, and inside the company it's, in the, it's a mess inside. I mean, everything is is. Is the people that are not managing. I mean, this, I mean, it's not easy. I mean, we're many for for huge organization. We're talking thousands of computers. So we're talking of. I mean, I don't know how many passwords or things. But I mean, it's not it's not easy. That, but we have we have to do it, right? So okay. So now we have we, we have been and um, and um, keep in mind that there are tools these days to, to track almost anything. I mean, there are tools. I mean, I have. We are not going into games or Skype or anything like that. But same archives. I mean, you can get kind of for Skype, online games, same way. I mean, there are tools to, to do that in no time. So, for example, now we have, let's say we have, we have, with all the tools, I mean, we have getting the password for many applications we, we already know, like email browsers, some messaging, whatever, right? So now, okay, let's, let's, let's do, so now let's, we are working on way. So now let's go for the custom apps because many, many, many clients usually they do a lot of fun things with, with custom apps. For example, uh, so let's 
try to reverse those applications to, to see if we can get any, any passports there. So in that case, we are looking for custom applications, uh, well-known passworthy applications, usually common places to, to look for those apps, usually maybe the user profile directory or how many times they put the, 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 the binaries in the, in the Windows folder, whatever, right? So some tools you can use to, to, to perform some some like basic reverse engineering, uh, some monitor tool, like registry files. You want to, for example, you want to see if the application is opening a file or is testing, or what kind of resources is the application accessing, and all that stuff. How many times you can see password there, or what's going on. Uh, of course, you can use IDA or Mutisil debugger if you are more advanced to, to do some real hardcore reverse engineering. But those are some stuff uh, we like to do with, with custom, custom application, right? And here we can do a lot of a lot of things with, it, with when we talk. I mean, when we talk with the, with the customer, and this is a, an example. Uh, and this, for example, is a is a. I mean, the, the one I can show you is, is fake. It's a small app application we developed, but it's for a real engagement we did, and I will tell you right now. So what happened here is uh, this customer. Um, what they did, they did, they put a, a small application in, the entire, in each computer of the entire. If you know if you knew where the, where that application was and you actually knew the password, you can become administration on, the, on that machine just by executing that tool and, and putting the password. And so that file that file was everywhere in the entire on on, on, on the, all the computers in the in the organization. So, so we think we thought it was kind of kind of nice. So what happened? For example, is very similar. So what happened? Is, so if you know the password for that and you execute it and you, you, you put the password, you become the administration, right? So actually, that, this, this plan, they did that. I mean, they, they put a, this kind of something similar to this, a form asking for a password. If you need the password, you are the, you are the administrator. So, so the thing is, we took that binary and we started analyzing. And we didn't do much with it. I mean, we didn't have any much time to, to do some hardcore revision engineering. Actually, there was no need because with, actually it was quite easy to find. I mean, it was a .NET application, and we just used some, some I mean, this tool, uh, LLDNS. Actually, it's a freeware tool from Microsoft. You, you, can, you can download MSDN or with, with, with Visual Studio. So actually, we just put the binary in there, and we get the password. And actually, that was real. And we did that really in, in a Cayenne. And, and the guy got, wow. And, then, and when we were there, we were there in, the, in, the, in the presentation, the final presentation, talking about this, and they were saying, wow, how can you do that? I mean, first thing, I mean, is it, the question was, they asking us, how, how can you do that? And we say, I mean, that, the question is, no, if we can do it or not. And the question is, why did you do that? I mean, the guy, why did you put the password in the binary everywhere in the, in the entire company? And, and actually, it was a financial, financial services so with this kind of thing. So actually, it was, well, for us, I mean, it was a huge thing. I think for us, it was quite funny. It was easy, easy, easy to find. I mean, the thing is, in, in, in this case, it's not like Google looking around and we just found it. I mean, for example, we were doing a security review. It's not like we were hacking on the computer organization or anything like that. So we were talking with it. Actually, we were doing a, a security assessment. So we were, when we were, talking, we were doing a meeting with them, and I don't know, I don't remember why, but the, the thing came up. I mean, they were telling us they have an application there to become administration. So we said, okay, kind of cool. Uh, can we take a look on that? I said, yeah, sure, take a look on, on the application. And we did this. And, and that, It was for real. This so for us, it was kind of funny, and I think, it, and I, this is the only thing, the, the only time I have seen this. But it can happen. I mean, you can see many, 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 many developers, many companies putting passwords inside the, inside the application, right? So we have to keep about this stuff. I mean. So now, for example, now we have like seven passwords. We have that match. I mean, we have we have many things for for internet or other system, we have a wireless access, we have access to another machine, we want to move there and play. So so it's kinda of good. I mean we are talking maybe all of all this I guess. I mean without it, if, we, if we don't have to do any reverse engineering or anything like that to run all these tools, maybe we have just been working there maybe an hour or two, something like that, and we have a bunch of powers we can we can move and work with them. 
everything. So, so at least, at least, not not much time, and we have a lot of results now. So we can we can pay. And so I must say that that uh, it, it is true that many many customers they are not that happy of, of doing that. For example, on the password showing around, you show show them show them the password. So usually when we do the security reviews. We agree with the customer whether you want us to do or not. We usually, we usually ask for a couple of desktops, uh, for, for user desktops, to do this kind of work. If they say yes, we will show you proof. Uh, if they say no, we, we, unfortunately we cannot. We, cannot, we can try other things and uh, we're going to show you. But it's not like we can do all this kind of stuff because they don't want to see that. But I mean, we try to explain, I mean, attackers, attackers have malware as well as this. So it's better us than the malware for sure. But still, I mean, you have, I mean, you have to work with the customer and explain that. So it's a um, little, little bit of fight there with the customer. But I think more and more these days, customers are realizing these kind of threats. So hopefully, they are agreeing to, to do this kind of stuff. I mean, it's not. I mean, if you do any, any, no. I mean, as if you do a sudden, if you do a security scanning tool or something like that, many of these password things will, will come up anyways. So it's not like we are doing, we are doing anything weird or anything like that, right? So now we have, we have get a bunch of password we're gonna use, and and everything was local. So that's that's kind of nice. Okay, okay, we are we are tired working this machine. I mean, right now we can, we have a bunch of hardware. There's nothing more we, we can think about it in, in the machine. So I guess it's time to move to to other places and, and keep keep moving, right? So let's move to to a more network exploitation, right? So for the for the password hunts. So now we are we are still moving to to the network layer. So things we look for. I mean, SQL, FTP, internet, SMMP, all that kind of stuff. It's amazing. I don't know how, how it's still. But I mean, I did a review for a, for a huge hospitality company uh, last week, and still I was seeing FTPs and, and all kinds of stuff lying around in, in, in the corporate network. So it's amazing how many stuff uh, is still open there while I mean, in, in the company. So, so you have access internally, you can access almost everywhere, so it's, it's crazy. Um, I mean, come on, well-known password, right? We all know we all know, know about password, right? And for the Tomcat. The Tomcat has a common well-known password, Tomcat, Tomcat, gives you administration access, uh, SQL Server, the SAE account, FTP, Anonymous, quite popular, I, I see plenty of times. Uh, I mean, there are hundred. I mean, there are hundred of passwords, well-known passwords, and uh, on the internet, they are in the resources. There are a couple of links you can go there, and there you can find a huge list of, of well-known passwords we, we use to perform the testings, right? And uh, not, not only that, for well-known passwords, but still open interface and no authentication system. I, just, I, I have seen many any routers or other systems with no password at all. You just connect to, to the services and you have their interface while while open. And so it's amazing still in 2010 you, you see all this kind of stuff. I mean we are talking stuff. I mean all this, come on, this is the eighties or the nineties still, so but we're still seeing this. And I guess it will keep going for for a for a while. <coughs> so okay, so we can we can do a lot of network hunting for, for passwords uh, to look for more stuff. BNC or network shares or whatever, right? So we can also use those to see where, where we can go. And of course, we can also, if nothing works, maybe we can sniff the network and get in password there. And usually with the sniffing thing, I say, I mean, many cans with the sniff, they don't like that. I mean, some, some do, they say, okay, well, well, do whatever you want in the network. For the, for the security, but usually running a sniffer on the network, they're not very happy about that. That means attackers will do it for sure. So if you go, you are allowed to, excellent. And many times you can see many, many passwords lying playing around on the network. And there are some really nice tools to, to do that, to do some analysis on, on the network. So, for example, let's see now, let's imagine I have been running a couple of scanning things. Uh, I come up with a Tomcat, VNC, SQL Server, FTP, and that's quite common. I see that this kind of stuff, 
very, very often when I do the security reviews with customers. <clears throat> so, if, for example, now we have access to a lot of different systems. So, I mean, I guess the only thing is I'm missing time to play with all these kind of systems. That's the only thing I am missing, right? So, so for example, so now you, you can see we have we are moving forward and we can move to those machines and do the same thing we have been doing with the local expectation and work our way way to to to, to what we want. At some point, I guess we are we are done. I mean, for example, in this case, we are, we, have, we are doing this. We can say the customer, I look at it. I mean, we are pretty much done with your your network and this, all the system. We, we, we have been getting access to your to your system, and this is kind of funny because here we are not been using any meta exploit, latest exploit, or something like that. We are just uh, taking uh, advantage of your configuration the files and your your good passwords, and this unfortunately works quite well. In most organizations today, so it's kind of it's kind of nice to do to be to do this kind of stuff. So, for example, here we have a Apache Tomcat. <coughs> this is this is one of my gigs, and that, that was kind of funny because I, I was doing the security review and I found this this uh, manifestation uh, page for the Tomcat. So when I, I was talking with the security team of, of this company, I said, "Guys, you have a Tomcat server with no with no password at all." Just connect to the, to, the, to the site. That's it. I say, okay, we didn't know that about uh, that. This the, talk, the the response was, yeah, this is um, an application that was bought from a third party vendor, and it was requested by the developer team, and we don't know what's going on. So actually, the developer team. So we were talking with the developer team, and they didn't know. The, th the funny thing is, it was a custom application for a third party, but they didn't know this application was running a Tomcat server behind it with a default configuration. So what, no one in the company knew about that. So I guess when you buy software, I guess you should know what's, what's running inside, right? So, uh, so we thought it, it was kind of funny to, to, to talk with the team and, and find this, this, this wide open system, right? Again, same thing. I mean, we are doing a security assessment, and we are doing the scanning, and this uh, router interface pop up, and we connect to the, to the to the router, and we get this this uh, this uh, open interface, administration open interface, and say, oh, nice. So we have, we have done anything. We are just running on some network scans, and we come up with this this. So we are talking again with the security network guy, and then, I mean, they didn't know anything about. And, and the response also was, ah, yeah, this is a router. Uh, it's from the beginning of the 90s, so no one is in charge of the router in the, in the company, and it's internal, so nothing, nothing wrong, wrong can happen, right? So okay, whatever. So this, I think, this router has been there from, from the 90s, and with with no password at all. So uh, I don't know. I, I don't want to imagine what things can happen. It's crazy. So you find all this stuff laying around in the companies big time. <clears throat> so now we have, we have done a lot of local exploitation for password and network exploitation, and we have a bunch of passwords now. But still, there are many more places we can look for for, for passwords. Uh, oh, that's one of the favorites. I mean, if you do code reviews, I mean, you will find this quite actually. That's very common. I don't know if you, you can see it fine from, from, from the last row. You can see it? Okay, perfect. So that's very common. For example, for the, for the, um, for the um, .NET application, that's a configuration file. And many, many developers still, they like to put a, a, the password there in the, in the clear text for the connect to the, to the database. And we still see a lot of that today for, for the application. So that's another place you can find a password layer right around. So for example, if you compromise or you are doing a security review in a, in a, in a server, just go to the, to the, to the IAS folder. To the applications, I mean, if you see any config files, check them just in case, because maybe you don't find many passwords. Keep in mind that I'm showing just Windows stuff, but the same same applied for, for Linux or any Unix operating system. Same same thing. I mean, you can find passwords everywhere the same same way. Uh, more passwords. That's another one in source code, right? For example, the, the one I showed you before with the revision engineering. For example, here we have the pieces code. 
with 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 a with a password. And when we perform the code reviews, that's thing couple of things we look for. And here there is a couple of issues. So actually two issues, I guess. Anyone want to get take a, a bet of the two issues? The key is one of the issues, and the other one, the initialization vector <laughs> is fixed. Hmm. So that's very common, and we still see a lot of the times to, when we do core reviews, and, and we find this kind of stuff, fixed keys, and uh, in, in, in the code. It was like an example I showed you before, right? And, so it's crazy. I mean, for example, if you have, you're not doing a review and you find source code, when you're doing a security review on the, on the first actor level, and you, for example, go to, to the web servers or to the developer machines, you're doing a review, if you check, maybe you, you, if, you, if you can check the source code, maybe you can find some password there. So what we have done, we have, run, we have, we have written a couple of uh, Python, Python scripts to do that kind of job for us. So we'll connect to a machine and we'll actually the scripts and it, it, it will check. Tools and then we have a couple of tools we use we use to help us to look for backwarding configuration files, source code, and all that stuff. I mean, it's, I mean, this is easy to find, and we don't want to waste too much time working on this, right? So it's kind of it's kind of funny. <coughs> and this is another favorite, right? For example, remember we have uh, access to the SQL Server maybe with the with the administration account maybe, so we can do some SQL queries and look for 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 passwords. And for example, here we have a database with 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 accounts, uh, with uh, and those are the passwords. I mean, those like can look kind of weird, but I mean they are just queer text passwords stored there in the database, and that's very common. We still see that quite a lot these days. I mean, the databases are not protected enough, no, the data is not encrypted or anything like that, and you can still find this quite a lot when you do security reviews. Both uh, you do the infrastructure or you do application security reviews, you should be able to find this kind of stuff. So, uh, so now let's move to to, to money, right? I mean, let, show me the money. That's the, that's the thing. I mean, I mean, I mean, you do execute the review, you do it because you get paid, right? But there's a lot of people on the internet they are doing this for for the, for the money, and and they get paid by but not by not by you, but by other people to hack you. So let's talk about underground economy, right? So show me the money. I mean, for example, Panda Labs re uh, released a report, I think it was last year, and they were saying that a passport is still a trillion, costs $300. Uh, dollars. So actually, you go to the black market, and there are many places in, 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 on internet, on many sites, you can buy these kind of tools. So they will give you a customized trillion with all your requirements and all this stuff uh, for 600 for, or more. I mean, these days, I don't know, Places are the same, or not? With the crisis, maybe it has to go up. I don't know. I mean, I guess they follow, even the even underground groups they follow the crisis, right? So they have to adjust with the crisis. So I mean, there's a lot of business uh, still in password, right? So people should start thinking about. I mean, companies should thinking about all the all the passwords. Uh, another one, for example, uh, uh, a group, um, uh, 76 service. Uh, from a Russian hacking group, uh, okay. Uh, another uh, password is still in Trojan. In this case, they pay like 1,000, 2,000, depending on, on the on the requirement. So now it's not like you buy you, you are buying just a payment for you. I mean, you get that Trojan with all your requirements. So it's kind of nice. If you're not doing nothing and you're getting a nice tool you can use to 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 make more money, right? To still stop. And people are doing this for for real. And we are talking a lot of money here. <coughs> Semantic. I mean, uh, World of Warcraft password? Awesome. I mean, the Chinese pay a lot of money for World of Warcraft passwords. So you get access to any of those passwords, you can sell it on the Chinese market, big time. So there are a lot of money involved here. And people should, I mean, so that's the reason why you should start thinking about your, your password in your, in your company, right? In your, so here you can see uh, what numbers are we talking about. We are talking about, about a, a lot of money here, you think about it. Uh, another from from the semantic, and this is from you can see the from April and June 2010. So this is quite this is the latest report. Uh, you can see bank account, email account, uh, 
how they, they pay. They has increased. I mean, this out of uh, increase there, you can say range five to twelve dollars per account. So you get fashion account for more. I mean, you are making nice, decent money there. I mean, there are people didn't just doing this. I mean, they are not working. They are just stealing your passwords. I mean, if I could, I would do it. That for sure. So tool of case. I mean, so I show you a couple of tools and stuff. To, so so here. Are, of tools you can use, for example, brute force. I mean, it's not like we are going to do brute force because that's too noisy, it takes too much time. That's too, sometimes it can give you a couple of nice results. For example, what we look to, to do is, for example, put a list of well known passwords and just do, doing that. We don't, we don't want to do all, all the entire brute force space. It usually, you don't think it any good results. But Kena and Abel and Peter have done. Super scan. I mean, we are using common tools you can find uh, on the internet. I, I use, I'm sure many of you have used all of them, or pretty much uh, almost. So you are familiar with this tool, and these simple tools, well-known tools, give you so much results in, 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 co in corporate networks. It's, it's amazing. <coughs> in and out, actually, is a, in case you are not familiar with this tool, it's quite nice because it performs a lot of local expedition, but at the same time, it gives you a lot of network expedition at the same time in just one, one single tool. Um, it usually works fine in XP. Actually, in, in, X, in Windows 7, it doesn't work quite well. So, if you want to use it, I recommend XP or you know, you, if you're using Linux, there are other uh, ethical. Your, your favorite to use, that's for sure. Linux is but for example, as, for example, in the examples I showed you before, I use like sing, a single tool to perform a single action. And with using this tool, we, you can get the password for the wireless browsers, VNC, uh, in just one, one click, almost. So it's kind of nice to, to, to use it. And usually at the at the end, just those tools are nice, but many times you do this for for a while. Actually, at the end, you will start writing your own scripts to perform much of the tasks. So that's the thing we have done. We have our own set of scripts, and that's the stuff we use to, to collect all these passwords as soon as possible, right? So actually, we, we try to, when we go to assessment, in the first couple of days, get as many passwords as we can for, for what we are doing, and then we will, we will see what we can do after that. So for example, those are top resources. Nearsoft is a really nice place. Freeware, Full of freeware tools you, you can use. Uh, the file powers list, quite nice. And actually, the funny thing is, I guess this topic is quite. I, I, when, when I was talking with Karik about this stuff, uh, we thought about doing this presentation for, for, for a long time ago in source. But actually, the funny thing is, uh, I don't need the release of something uh, very similar topic uh, talk uh, just a couple of months, like a month ago. So I guess this, this topic in, is, is quite popular these days. Uh, so I guess there's too many passwords around, and many times we can abuse them. Right? So, so I think I think I think we have to do something about it. I mean, it's, it's nice to have all the antivirus and firewalls and all that stuff, but still we have bad bad design, well-known password and everything. It doesn't matter. We have really latest technology, right? So think about all your passwords in your in your corporate networks. Thanks. I don't know. Anyone has any question or experience they want to comment? I, I guess I'm sure you guys doing your security reviews will find something similar all the time. This is amazing. Things that we're talking. I mean, there's so many mechanic defenses we can, we can apply. I mean, we're talking about the databases. We will tell the customer to encrypt databases and data. Systems. Um, 
we come for example for the Mac Mini cameras and the others, we can match with a new alarm. Yeah, there's nothing we can do. I mean, how many, this is not all the system, how many is it? 